Not sure if this dream counts as incredibly paranormal, but it was incredibly vivid and left such an impact that I didn't know where I was upon waking up. In the dream, I'm a businessman in NYC, walking through a subway station on my way to work. I see a homeless man trying to stop people and tell them something, but he's speaking complete nonsense as I get closer to him. Suddenly, he grabs my shoulders and stares into my soul. He explains that behind every three-dimensional object, on the side of it you can't see, there is a red plastic cup. The cup moves around the object as you do, and you never see it. There are thousands of these cups in every room at any given time. I understand everything. My vision goes multidimensional, and I can see there are indeed thousands of red plastic cups in the room, moving around objects as people do to remain always out of sight. I think to myself that there must be a god if such a silly thing like this is a fact of the universe. Suddenly, the hobo is gone, and I realize I really need to tell people about this. I struggle to get people to listen to me, but nobody is listening. After days of begging, someone finally listens, and I see the look on their face change as they understand what I understand. I float up towards the ceiling and look down at them as they try to make someone listen. I wake up full-blown crying, sprint out of bed to find someone to tell about this, then I realize it's not true at all and was just a dream. I go back to bed. A lot of you might not find this scary, but it was the most terrifying dream for me. Also it's not a typically paranormal thing, anyway here goes. Dreaming about a weird higher class cafe in what appears to be a skyscraper, marble stone, gold lining, with girlfriend and ex-friend who she used to date at a table. He's explaining how his rich dad is going to give them a $1,000 a month apartment. I'm still dating her in my mind so I'm like WTF to her cause she seems all into it. I attempted to reach out to her, recalling how she said money is unimportant in contrast with our love. She doesn't even acknowledge me but giggles as he mentions the ring he'll get her with his dad's big bucks. Every memory of her saying how I was better comes to mind, but now with money she wants him, I rage like a chimp. They laugh, a waiter comes and exclaims what's wrong with this loser. After a lot of that is me talking to her on the phone and then driving to see her, anticlimactic mostly. Just a real deep breakup feeling. I give a fuck, she doesn't give a single. Wallowing in anguish, what am I going to do now? Dream was so real and deeply impactful I remember thinking I wish this was a dream so I could wake up. I'm in a townhouse talking to my ex-friend's mom and dad. Rather than console me they go on about how I'm an awful person for dating the girl in the first place, as his ex should have mentioned. They also go into great detail about how he is smarter and better than me and how I'm just a simpleton for not going to university. Feels lame as fuck, almost seems like something they'd do can't take it anymore, head upstairs. They are in bed sitting against the wall clothed, a glaze of contentment covers their eyes. I plead to the girl I thought you loved me blah blah blah, she seems so disinterested and unreachable. Ex-friend has a little smirk. After more circular conversation I give up and leave, fast forward again I'm in a snowy parking lot outside a bar in my car. Get a phone call, it's her. She goes on about how her love was much deeper for him and more complex, penis size, intelligence, fortune as well. I can't help but plead to the part of her I used to know, but to a disinterested response. She stops talking suddenly, I hear the purring and moaning of them fucking for about 20 seconds before I wake up, 4 hours before usual time. I still can't believe I woke up, it felt more real than any dream, I have a lingering dread and feeling of breakup. I don't even want to talk to her. Let me add again sorry for not being classic paranormal but to me it was the most horrifying dream I've ever had, scarier than any alien or monster one. First off, I gotta let you know, I don't expect you guys to believe me. Hell, I barely believe me, and part of me wants to dismiss it as being a result of all the drugs and alcohol I was in at the time but given that it was specific to that location, and the fact that I have a scar to prove it, and frankly, how real it all felt, I don't really buy that. So I guess really this is just me getting it off my chest. 
Back in 2011 I was in the Fort Campbell Army Base Warrior Transition Unit after being medevaced from Afghanistan. For those that care to know, I got exploded and it fucked up my back, hip, and knees. Anyway, the barracks they stuck is in were gods know how old, but they'd been holding injured, crazy, dying, and suicidal soldiers for a very long time. Shit like that tends to attract bad juniors, I've learned. And I've been to quite a few transient places, hospitals, homeless shelters, mental facilities, for depression, in case anyone's thinking I'm just schizophrenic, to know that vibe. This place however, it felt, angry seems too cheesy. It felt like something was about to happen, like the calm before the storm, that guttural feeling you get when you're a kid with a bad report card about to be opened. Anyway, one night, a couple of weeks in this place, I heard someone in the next room making banging noises and moaning gibberish at like 3 in the morning. This continued for the next two days, sometimes I even thought there were scraping noises against my wall, until my squad leader asked me if I'd been sleeping alright, wondering if my pain meds weren't working. I told him about the sounds next door, thinking this was someone really passionate about their masturbation and whatnot. He talks to me the next day, saying he'd looked into it, and there was no one living next door to me. Surmising that it might have been echoing from upstairs. So I looked into it. The floor above me was this guy named Bashing. Real quiet type, into computers and trip hop, slept all the time. I kinda doubted he was the source of the noise, but I asked anyway. He pointed out that as a matter of fact he'd been up at 3 AM, but he was lying in bed listening to his earphones. His roommate was still in the hospital too, so he got ruled out. I tried his neighbor as well, for safe measure, but he said he was knocked out, and he was in for stomach problems so it was unlikely he was having PTSD related night terrors. So I leave it be, and that night, I hear the noise again. This time, I get pissed, and even though I know the next room is empty, I knock hard against the wall. I was actually surprised when it stopped. For a moment. Next there was no banging, no moans, only that scraping sound in intervals. I told myself it could be rats in the walls or some shit, but that wouldn't account for the banging and moaning. I almost laughed. I was freaked out yeah, but I thought spooky moaning sounds had to be the most cliché style of haunting there had to be. The next day, I had staff duty, which meant I was working the front desk all day, but also meant I had access to all the room keys. So I waited for some dumbass to lock themselves out of their rooms, then take advantage and sneak a peek at the room next door. Only it turns out that it didn't lock at all. The inside of the room was clean, empty, no scratch marks on the wall, nothing suspicious at all except the feeling of being watched, which I figured was just related to last night's incident. So I went for a smoke to calm my nerves, and ask what it meant that a door didn't lock. The guy on staff duty told me it was a room they used for people on suicide watch. Well shit, I thought, so this was a phone. Of course, this was just the start. Later on that day, I rationalized it was probably someone who knew the room was open and was sneaking in to bang his girlfriend or some shit. I considered checking it out next time the banging started, but frankly, both possible results of either finding some otherworldly shit going down, or watching some guy bump literal uglies with some stripper from Clarksville were equally unappealing. There was no need, however, there were no loud sounds coming from the other room for about a week. Then I spent all day drinking water for a urine test, and spent the rest of my evening pissing clear liquid. I thought I was done, until I woke up at like 3 AM needing to piss real bad. That's when I heard it. The banging and the moans had stopped, but that scraping noise was sounding closer. And this could have been my imagination, but I could swear I could see fingers prodding out of my wall for an instant. I ended up saying fuck this noise, and sleeping in the bathtub that night. The next day, I went back into the room to change. Everything looked the same except, dimmer, somehow. I figured it was because I just woken up, but it stayed like this the rest of the day. Needless to say, I was spending less and less time in my room. That weekend I got absolutely wasted, and ended up passing out in my bed. 
I awoke the next morning with my cell phone in hand, a new text open with the words, it's coming, typed in. I just had to burst into laughter at how corny it was. Part of me swore it was just drunk me fucking with hung over me, which is something I would do, actually. The next day I hooked up with this girl and we fucked, only to have her scream out, I shit you not, it's coming. I was certain I'd misheard and she'd said, I'm, but I was bursting into laughter anyway, much to her confusion. I explained the situation after, and it turned out she was big into the supernatural and psychic stuff, no surprise, I did meet her at a hookah bar. So of course she suggested a Ouija board, but I refused, saying this shit was already cliché enough as is. She then suggested I ask to switch rooms, which was reasonable, but I guess partially due to stubbornness and laziness, I kept putting it off. A couple of nights later I woke up to what I could have sworn was a grab of my shoulder, stood up, and in the darkness, on the floor I could see what looked like the outline of a million fat, giant black worms, actually, shape-wise ID say they were more like leeches, writhing on the floor. It wasn't quite even a physical shape, more like I could see the shadows of their invisible bodies. At which point I went nope.jpg and cocooned myself in a fetal position inside my blanket, certain I was hallucinating, only to eventually pass out. The next morning I woke up to find a wormless floor, and figured it was just a really vivid dream, only to find what looked like, it's here, scrawled into my little weatherproof notebook, as if I'd written it with my left hand. After downing a keg. And suffering from a concussion. Basically, it was almost eligible, which was a perfect opportunity for me to dismiss it as being able to be anything. So I go on later in the day to take a shower after PT, in the little bathroom right next to the kitchen and bedroom, these were really small barracks rooms, only to have my horrible rendition of the red hot chili peppers under the bridgets interrupted by the sound of someone moving around in the kitchen area. I pause, and yell out, who's there, with no reply. I never hear a door open or close, which is odd because if it had been staff, they sure weren't mindful about making all sorts of other noise. So there I am, naked, steam coming off me, I like my showers hot, carrying the towel holder pole as if it would do something, only to find the room empty. I relaxed, putting the pole down, only to feel like something was breezing behind me. I swear, I think I broke some sort of record for changing into clothes and bolting out the room that day. So I talked to my squad leader about switching rooms, claiming I still can't sleep due to the noise and asking for an appointment with a social worker because reasons. I decide to go to my room only to grab essentials and bolt, accidentally, leaving stuff in my friends' rooms to avoid trips. Social work was no help. They suggested it might be brought on by insomnia, but that still didn't explain a lot of the details, nor the fact that it was directly connected to that room. I went back into it, packing my stuff little by little for whenever there was a room available, but I'm guessing whatever was in there decided it was tired of subtleties. One day, as I was about to leave the room after packing, I felt a spout of vertigo, that quick feeling of the room spinning, only to find the shit I'd packed strewn across the floor. This happened several times as I tried getting through the door, only to eventually give up and stay in, skipping dinner. The next morning I ended up calling and coaxing my friend into meeting him in my room for breakfast. He called me to ask where I was after he'd knocked on my door several times and no one answered. I managed to get to the open door and meet him in the hallway at least, but spent most of that morning trying to coax him into coming over. Someone had to see what was going on. I couldn't do this alone, but I couldn't tell anyone either. My depression was getting to me as well. I had started cutting myself. Nothing too deep. I guess just as a way of making sure I was awake. Luckily no one noticed, or rather unluckily because at this point I'd rather be institutionalized. Shit was getting weirder. I leaned against the wall at one point, only to feel it wriggling underneath me. I'd talk to myself, simple stuff like, did I leave this in my pocket and hear a reply in my head that wasn't my own. Things would randomly be out of place, thin yellow slime trails would appear to be sweating out of random spots on the wall, I'd occasionally feel random touches with nobody there, and, weirdest of all, I think, random little dried up frog corpses would appear seemingly out of nowhere. 
Finally, my squad leader came through, almost a month later, saying I had two days to move to the next room and clean this one up. So after leaving the place spotless and frog corpse free, it was my last nightingale that room. Everything was packed and ready to go, and I was absolutely exhausted. I decided to lay down in full uniform because fuck it, and dozed off. Without fail, 3 a.m., I had to take a piss. So I go to the bathroom, and as I'm about to walk back into the room, I see it. The thing had an adult-sized head, and a small, disproportionate torso, it had long, greasy, black hair, and its entire skin looked like that of a burn victim's. Its limbs looked boneless and coiled around like tentacles with fingers at the end, what passed for its head were just three large, gaping holes with what looked like giant black worms wriggling inside it. Those holes gaped wider as it released an inhuman scream, then I realized part of that screaming was me, and I bolted out of the room. I stayed up the rest of the night, smoking outside without talking. For some reason, the idea that this was a Hispanic woman came into my head, although that thing looked like it had never been human. The next day I moved to a separate room upstairs, which was stupid, given that I was in crutches, and remember thinking, man, maybe I should have taken Chloe up on that Ouija board and feeling real bad for it for some reason. A week later, I woke up in the middle of the night, only to hear that sound again. Scrape, scrape, scrape. Luckily however, Four days later we did a mass move to the newly finished barracks a few streets down, and those old ones became MP barracks. And hey, you know, fuck MPs. They could have that shit. I did ask around however, and people did claim to see weird shit in those barracks every now and then, but at least my story there was done. Also, I sorta regret not taking pictures, but honestly there was nothing to take pictures of other than tiny little frog carcasses. And that's just weird, yo. Also, when you're that fucking terrified, surprisingly your mind doesn't usually think, gee, this sure would make for a great Kodak moment. The summer after my junior year of high school my family stayed at a hotel in Panama City Beach called. In paradise it was a cheap hotel. But it was right alongside the beach. Anyway. The third night there my dad met this black dude that was down at the beach and he invited him to hang out and have a few drinks. Anyway they get drunk and talk and have a good time and my dad invites him to hang out the next night. He says no, because he has plans with friends. So the next night we go to bed early. Around 4 in the morning, we are woken up by a knock on the door. A policeman tells us that our hotel room had been broken into but they had caught the guy who did it. We assumed the black dude had broken in and stole our sheet, because he is sitting there talking to the cops. We came to find out that a six foot six, white dude with a gun and a Philly knife who was mentally unstable BTW had broken into our room and raided the place. The only reason anybody found out about this is the black dude the night before was hanging out with. His other black friends down by the beach and they intervened and apprehended him. We found out he had been living in a room in the hotel for two weeks and we found a bunch of stolen sheeted in his room, along with used needles and a lot of prescription drugs. We could have been killed. This is why I now own a gun. My family used to believe we had a ghost in our house. I personally don't believe that anymore, but I do have memories of creepy things happening. I don't know what it was. All I know is what I heard felt etc. There's no particular order to any of this. My mom would often hear things. Usually, it was the sound of the front door opening. Sometimes it occurred when she was alone. She'd assume one of us came home only to find no one did. However, on at least one occasion my brother, a friend and I were in the living room when she came out in a flurry saying who opened the door. No one had and no one else heard it. She also heard us call out to her. My dad was at work when she heard him from the back room she was in the kitchen. LOL. Hey. And on it. She also heard me say the same thing mom. Instead of name. Early in the morning while I was dead asleep. 
I'm not known to talk in my sleep. My brother does, but he's never made a loud exclamation like she'd heard. One night, my dad was working and my mom and brother went grocery shopping. Bored. I sat on the living room couch with my cat in my lap. The parents' room's door was open, which is behind the living room connected by a hallway. I heard my mom's footsteps. She drags her feet because they're fucked up pacing up and down the room and near the hall. At first I wondered if someone had broken in, but we had two dogs. Neither barked. There was no sound of windows being broken, and no sound of objects being moved around. Just the steady pacing getting a bit louder than a bit softer. Then the fucking toilet seat from the bathroom lifted up, making the clink sound of porcelain. This is right behind the living room, which begins the hallway connecting my parents' room. I noped on the couch until mom and brother came home. Checked the toilet. The seat was down. I was 11 or 12. I played the Ouija board every day. I thought it was the best thing ever. I showed all my friends this thing. They all thought I was nuts. We went outside underneath a shed and played. After a while, something was thrown against the shed, probably a rock. It happened a few more times. My friends got scared. Rocks on the ground started shaking, then the ground shook. It sounded like someone was jumping on top of the shed, but no one was there. Everyone ran out but me, I still had my hands on the Ouija board. It wasn't an earthquake, we never get them where I live. We were the only ones who felt the ground shake. One more that made me WTF. I was around the same age as then. A friend introduced me to Wicca. I looked up spells and shit. I found one for a wish. I wished to lose 10 pounds, didn't even need to, but why not? I didn't think about it after. About to go to bed and blow out the candle. Something is engraved on the candle. It says 10 pounds on the fucking candle. WTF. How can you explain that shit? Go to bed scared. Wake up, hopefully, it's a dream. Look in the mirror, I can see my ribs. Go check the candle, still says, 10 pounds. Order a large pizza, and eat it all. Never again. This happened a long time ago, still having nightmares about it, I was 12. I had a sleepover with friends at one of my friend's granny's houses, there were four of us, two males, including me, and two females, his granny was asleep, we've separated into different rooms, girls in one and boys in another, my friend wakes me up at 2am, I need to go to the bathroom, my friend is a bit cautious, so he was very careful and slow in walking down the hallway, I was walking in front of him, his granny owned a dog, and the dog was awake and staring at us, we both freak out a little, but ignore it, it's dark, and we can't turn on the lights without waking the others, my buddy goes into the bathroom, and I wait outside, I turn around and see that the dog is staring at me with a creepy stare, dude, hurry up, my buddy comes out of the bathroom, where is the dog, I turn around, and the dog isn't there, shit pickles jpg, we go back to our room faster, Unlock our room and slowly open the door. The dog is on our bed, looking at us, smiling. Dogs can't smile. No pun open no open. I close the door and quickly go inside the girl's room. Knock on the door and they let us in. They're confused as fuck. We tell them everything. They laugh at us. They let us sleep in their room. Afterward, we tell this to the granny and she says that never happened before. Guys, what is this? Do you know what happened and what was wrong with the dog? I've never told this story to anyone before because I still cannot wrap my mind around what actually happened. When I was around six I lived with my grandparents. My room was in the attic. As a child I was obsessed with supernatural things and there were no other kids on my street so I had a lot of alone time to sit and think about these types of things. My grandparents had a massive backyard that at nighttime was impenetrably dark. I never went back there and neither did my family. It was so eerie. I remember wondering what happened back there at nighttime for an excessive amount of time one night before bed. I eventually fell asleep. 
I woke up sweating in the middle of the night. And as a person who never gets up fast this was strange. I mean I was immediately wide awake. Now my room was shaped like a little kid's drawing of a house. The ceiling came to a point and moved down to the floor on either side until it was about a foot away from the ground. My bed was on one end. All of my belongings and clothes were in the closet at the foot of my bed and on the other end was an electrical socket. There was never anything plugged into that socket for whatever reason. I remember looking over at that socket and seeing a dark blue and orange mist start to pour out from it. It started to make its way up the ceiling until it completely cloaked the other half of my small room. I started to be able to make a face out in this mist. There were giant eyes and a surprisingly friendly smile, the face never changed and it never spoke aloud but I got a sense within me. It was communicating to me from within. I knew strongly what it wanted then but can't recall what it was trying to say now. It slowly retreated back into the socket. I didn't fall back asleep until the sun came up, I never told anyone about this. Maybe it was fear, maybe it was whatever this thing was trying to communicate to me, but I have never told a soul about this. A year later my mom got married and we moved out of my grandparents about 10 minutes from where they still live today. Years passed as they do and I grew up normally. I was not still am a little more infatuated with drugs than most other people but it never affected me really. I was always an honor student and had plenty of friends. Well anyways after my first experience with acid I started to get strange dreams. I kept having dreams with demons and monsters that were dark blue and orange just like the mist I saw when I was a kid. I brushed this off because like I said I was stoned all the time and weird thoughts were always going through my head. A few more years passed and I was talking to my grandfather about whether or not he's ever experienced anything out of the norm. Now he's a retired carpenter who hangs out in biker bars so I never got the sense that he's the type of guy to just bullshit about things. And this is fucking uncanny. He told me that one night while he was out back smoking a cigarette and he thought he saw a glowing figure make its way across its backyard. I asked if he was serious and he said yes. He described it as a dark blue and orange mist. I nearly lost my mind when he told me this. Lately these dreams have been reoccurring more and more. Any ideas on how I could possibly conjure up this thing while I'm awake? I need to know what it was trying to tell me as a kid. Fell asleep with my boyfriend on Skype. Then I am wide awake with a feeling of dread. Look towards my door. Say boyfriend's name on Skype, he answers, still awake. I thought to myself, I need to turn off Skype so he doesn't hear anything that is about to happen. Laptop completely dies. No blue screen, no updates, it's still plugged in. Just fucking dies. Room is in complete darkness, save for the lights from the Walmart I live about half a mile or so away. Right beside my door, I see very clearly, a dark hooded shadow. Shadow moves quickly from one side of the room to the bassinet where my newborn is sleeping. Disappears. I turn my computer back on and check to see if there was an update or a crash report or anything of that sort. Nothing. Call my boyfriend back on Skype. Only tell him, there was something in my room. It was not a shadow caused by headlights. I don't see how any headlights could have been bright enough to make a shadow like that. I have never had anything happen like that before or since. Once again, on Skype with boyfriend. Laying there watching videos on YouTube. Keep seeing something's feet standing next to my bed out of the corner of my eye. I've had experiences so much that it barely bothers me anymore, I just want them to leave me alone. Keep trying to turn my head so I don't see it. Finally, I get pissed. Mute mic, if there is something here, please just leave me alone. Wrong thing to say. No more white legs slash feet next to my bed, though. Roll over onto your back, pull up blankets. Hands come out of my blankets up towards my face. Only see it for like two seconds. Freak the fuck out. Kick slash throw blankets everywhere. Headset flies off, I'm flailing. Run to flip on light. Pick up the headset, crawl back into bed, pull blankets up. Boyfriend asks, everything okay? Anon. No, I just saw something. He asks, what did you see? 
I say, do you really want me to tell you? No. Keep the light on all night. I think he's gotten pretty used to my hauntings by now. So this story is going to sound kinky as hell initially, but I've grown pretty fearful of what I've started. Not sure on the rules of this but here. Be me, 18. Move into an old stanky as house friends family doesn't use. All the rooms are cold as balls. One closetesque room is incredibly warm and comfortable. Decide fuck it, sleeping in closet. Sleep surprisingly early. Wake up with a feeling of awesome, play it off as because warm. Start sleeping in the closet constantly. One night on the phone in the closet. Suddenly sensation. Sexy kinds. The fuck? Come, no damn liquid anywhere as I'm coming, it's like literally disappearing. Don't sleep in the closet for a few days. It is fucking cold. Closet to spooky. Ridiculous snowfall. Fuck it in closet. Same thing. I'm a teenage boy and I realize the implications of this. Going in constantly, skipping classes, etc. One day inside on the phone waiting for ghost BJ. Suddenly hands restrained. That is new. Feel something mount me. IDK how else to put it besides mount. It was weird. Insanely fast sex. As in it's moving like a damn piston. I feel compelled to mention I'm still fully clothed. Come. Usual stuff, no witness, whatever. State of shock, try to get up to leave. Closet door slams shut. Realize I haven't moved. Struggle ridiculously. I'm really feeble though. At the time, I was 116 pounds. Lol, get stuck in there for ages. Thing keeps riding on. Sex becomes pain. To give you an idea, I was in there Friday and came out Saturday afternoon. Feel tired AF, drink copious amounts of water. Weird as marks on my wrists. Months go by, I haven't been in the closet. Too spooky. Winter passes, it's warm as balls, no need for a closet. 1 a.m. playing Vidya. Loud as thunk from in the closet. Sothisi shoidi.png, more thunks. Nothing happens, assume all is well. I'm an idiot. Sleep in room. Wake up at like 5 a.m. Hands feel restrained. Initial groggy morning. Can't even piece this clear sign of oh shit together. Turn head to right. Closet door is wide fucking open. Again, ridiculous amounts of sex, boner doesn't die. Started at 5, got out at 1. I am dying. Drink water. Marks on wrists. Become an 18-year-old not into sex. I start barricading the closet because I don't deal with this kind of shit. Fuck these spooks. Stay up because fuck this ghost. I was pretty mad. It was like this ghost emasculated me, Sorta. Closet bangs, barricade holds true. Two more bangs, stops. Ye fuck you ghost. Shit goes flying. Barricade destroyed, computer monitor caught in debris. Closet door opens fully. Stand there dumbfounded. Sorry. Nothing happens. I'm a bitch. I've since barricaded the door again. It doesn't get mad unless I test it, which I've only done twice. I'm due back after winter break. Problem though is it's still winter. It's so damn cold I find myself constantly wanting to go back in there. I've seen her, but in a weird way. Will explain if asked. Unclimacticend.jpa
Canadian here, I used to be a commercial fisherman off the coast of Newfoundland. About five years ago, me and the crew went off the coast in our fishing boat with a one-month deadline, we were poor fags and needed the money and it was a dangerous job, but we were willing to take it just to get money in our pockets and food in our bellies. About a week into it, at around 4 a.m. in the morning where half of us were asleep, including me, and the other half were out on deck, there were a few yells for us to wake up and so we got out there quickly. The moon was bright that night like usual, allowing us to see the water, and he was pointing in it. There were literally severed hands in the water, swimming like fish. No arms, no body, no blood coming out of the ends, just living, hands. A shoal of them. It had to be some sort of fish, but it was fucking terrifying. There must have been millions. We tried to fish a few of them up, and sure enough, they were some sort of creature that looked exactly like a human hand, except it was black and grey like ash, and in the palm was a large circular mouth with an array of teeth. It even had nails on the fingers, they squirmed around and some of them attempted to climb onto the ship. A few of them got on my poor friend, Jim, and pulled him offshore and they swarmed him until all we saw were hands writhing in his fresh blood, devouring him. Logically, we had to fucking rush back home and so we did, all ten of us. We never set sail in the ocean again. Fuck that shit. I still have no idea what the fuck happened that day except that these scary handfish shit from the ocean depths killed my friend and ruined our jobs. I talked to a few marine biologists and some of them say it sounds like some sort of relative to a starfish. I'm really not sure what the fuck happened. Be me. 2009-ish. House is haunted, but only I can detect it for some reason. Now this is weird, since I'm not exactly sensitive to the paranormal that has always been my sister. Although I don't know how true her stories are, since she has always been an attention whore and would say anything as long as we had her attention. Also, before I continue, my room is very small and my bed is right next to the wall, for some reason. I always have to sleep on the open side of the bed, away from the wall, and I normally sleep facing away from the wall, so I continued trying to fall asleep. Tonight I am facing the wall as I sleep with my legs at a slag angle, the room to my back. I hear some creaking going on behind me. I then feel a pressure pushing down on the angle behind my legs. If you were to take your hand and push it against a cushion or your bed, it was like that. Didn't nope.gif. Since I knew the house was haunted and it was harmless. Go to sleep, wake up the next day with that pressure gone. I told my family a few weeks later about it, since we're all pretty accepting of the paranormal, although they're skeptical since they haven't experienced anything. After I moved out, my little stepsister at the time told me that she started to experience things, although what she told me was exactly what I had told everyone else before, so I didn't exactly believe her. Like I said, not the best, scariest story, I do have more. Creepier ones that my parents told me happened to them. The ones that I have personally are pretty boring like this one. So this next one is one that my dad and his side of the family always told us. Dak story is this. They used to live in a house in the middle of a field. It's the typical house you would imagine. Two. White. Two-story. Wraparound porch. Corn everywhere. The reason I know all that is because we drove by it about eight years ago. Anyways, according to what they all told me, it was my dad, my grandparents, and my great-grandparents all living in this house. They lived there about a year before all this started to happen. And it all happened suddenly. So basically, the haunting started with a very odd smell that progressively got worse. Got to the point where the dog they had would spend more time away from home than at home. Then, one day, my great-grandmother left out a chicken to cook that night, and she left in order to go to the store. My dad just got out of school before she came home, and when he got off the bus he said that the smell was 10x worse than what it has been. As he walked towards the house, he saw a blood trail all the way around the porch leading to the back of the house. He stayed at the end of the driveway, waiting for his parents to get home. They searched the house and found that the blood trail belonged to the chicken that was left out. They checked the kitchen window and also saw that it was broken, fearing that someone broke it. They called the cops when the cops got there. They had brought the police dogs with them. Apparently, the closer the police got to the house, the more restless the dogs got. And when it was time to have the dogs come out to sniff around for a scent, they refused to come out of the car. So after the police left, that night everyone was up trying to figure out what had happened. 
My dad told me that it was about midnight when they began to hear footsteps outside, along with what sounded like nails being dragged across the side of the house. This kept up for about an hour, he told me. The next night, the same thing happened, footsteps and scratching, the next day they looked outside, and there were small scratch marks on the side of the house. The next night, my family had called up their friends and had them stay over. Being in NC and the 70s, they had brought over a shotgun, thinking it was a normal person and that my family's imagination just caught the best of them. Sure, enough. Though, the same thing happened. Scratching. Footsteps. But this time they heard a screech, according to my dad and granddad. It sounded like tires on pavement, a cat's yell, and a dog's growl with a woman scream all at the same time. Freaking out, one of the neighbors opened the door and turned on the porch light. From what they had described, they saw a shadow on the porch that looked like a hunchback woman with long nails, tacing back and forth, even after everything ended. Nobody went to sleep and nobody left until the morning, after this happened. My family quickly left the house, I don't remember if we knew what exactly it was or what the backstory of the house is. Apparently though, the families that moved into the house after my family moved out didn't have any experiences, I don't know how true any of this is. Since I wasn't even thought of yet, the next story I have is more believable though. For the future, my sister's crib was downstairs, as well as the washer and dryer. And under the staircase was a closet with nothing but coat hangers in it. That being said, we go into the next story. This time, my mom was downstairs doing the laundry. My sister was in her crib when she started giggling. Mom didn't really think of it until my sister started to do that baby talk along with the giggling, as if someone was there. As my mom walked over to the crib, she saw the coat hangers rattle, as if someone had gilded their hands over them, causing them to hit each other. Mom grabbed my sister and no PD dot Avi out of there. The last one that I remember her telling me actually involved my dad. My dad worked at a place where he had to wear ties. And one day, all of his ties went missing except for this ugly pink smiley face one. For the whole week, they couldn't find the ties, my sister's crib was still downstairs. And one day, as my mom put her to bed she decided to look into the downstairs closet. When she looked, there were all of my dad's ties in a pile. No one knows how they got there. Nothing big enough for a full-fledged story, but I've had a few separate two spooky things happen my family and I. Grandma used to have dreams about people before they died. I've had similar dreams, used to hear screams, laughter coming from my grandfather's doghouse as a kid. Also, I hear laughter and chatting in the dead of night when I know nobody was home. Used to feel someone tugging on my hair beforehand as a kid. As I've gotten older this has become less frequent and the hair tugging has stopped completely. Sometimes feel something at my dad's house. It feels like something's following me, and sometimes I see a dark figure at the end of the bed. Closet door randomly opens and closes there as well. Had a relative who would make paper dolls in her fucking sleep. Had another relative who was supposedly haunted. She had a friend over one night and the friend saw the ghost in the mirror. The ghost fucking winked at her. Your story reminded me of a couple of things. Grandma used to have dreams about people before they died. When my mom was a kid, she was raised Catholic. She had an uncle who she was very close to. One night she woke up and saw Jesus' face on the ceiling looking at her. At first, she thought it could have been some kind of light from a church nearby that happened to shine the image, I if that's a thing. She was just rationalizing it. However, his lips started moving, so she screamed and woke up the family. The image disappeared for a bit, but after some time, it reappeared and again, the lips moved, and she screamed, repeat. She later found out that her uncle was dying that night. She's no longer Catholic and I'd if she believes in God, but that still spooks her to think about. It feels like something's following me. I've had that feeling countless times in my house. It mostly happened when I was younger, when my family believed we had a ghost. I don't believe in that anymore, just that people have experiences that can't always be fully known, explained. But damn I would get this sensation that something didn't want me around the house, and it would make me hurry back to my room. Now, I wonder if I just have a conditioned response, because there are nights where I just can't walk around the house without lights on because that feeling's there. Every time I'd have to go down the entrance hallway, turn and look, go to my room, and turn and look before closing the door. I've never saw anything, and I kinda hope I never do. Somewhat tied to that, and I wonder if anyone else has experienced this. I've had times where I'm walking through the house at night, and suddenly there's a flash of a dark silhouette. It's too quick to tell a distinct form, 
but it looks like someone might be standing there. I always think someone's there and that I'm going to bump into them, but after I flinch the shadow's gone. It rarely happens to me now. Kind of similar to that, but when I was a kid I'd see silhouettes rushing past my door I used to keep it open and then disappear. Too spooky. My mom would often see a brief image of what she thought was a man entering and leaving my room. One time though she said it was similarly dressed as I was and thought it was me. Years later I found out something interesting. Browsing, X, there was a thread about Hatman, and people talked about their encounters with him. I personally have no such story. However, without mentioning this to mom, we talked about the odd experiences we've had over the years. And one detail I don't remember her ever telling me was that sometimes the man she saw entering, exiting my room had a hat similar to Hat Man. I was both amused and spooked. Holy fuck. My mom also would see Hat Man when she was a child in Mexico. I saw a post about it on X and started oh freak out. I showed her. Oh shit. Speaking of Mexico, I have a close friend, who now lives there, in Guadalajara, and his mom has told me some freaky stories. I'll have to remember the details but if there's interest I'll post them. I have family in Guadalajara. Post it. I'm sure she's told me more than I remember. One of these days when I visit I'll have to record this shit. She told me about a time when it said the devil was in Mexico. When she was a kid growing up, there was a game, can't remember the name, where on Christmas Eve kids would pretend to be demons. Her family warned her about playing that game. But she, some of her cousins, and some friends decided to play it anyway. After a while, one kid pointed out a figure on the family's roof. She described it as having a monkey's head, about the size of one with a tail, but the legs were like a goat's with hooves. They all shat bricks. But one kid decided to climb a fence to get a better look. The kid slipped at the top, which had sharp ends sticking out, and it struck his chest. They ran inside and explained what happened, but none of the adults believed them about the devil. The kid survived, but that sharp end was terribly close to striking his heart. The next day she and some others went to the roof and there was a burn mark where the creature had stood. She's talked about it with those who were there that night. Link to beamp3.com from here. Download is don't worry be happy dot mp3. Download it. Play it on Windows Media Player. Sounds awesome. Love this track. Someone in the thread is writing, very freaked out. Tells everyone to import the song into Audacity and have a listen. I do so. Clearly a troll anyway. Oh no. No 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 no. Don't worry be happy is 4 minutes long. This behemoth is 20 minutes long. What? Shakingly, I hit play. Morbid curiosity is a curse. Ominous silence. Sounds like an enclosed space. Can hear wind. Sound of something sharp and rusty being scraped along a metal grate. Footsteps alongside this scraping. Keep listening. Footsteps continue to get louder throughout, heavy breathing can be heard. This shit goes on for 16 minutes, at which point a tortured, ear-piercing scream can be heard, sounds suspiciously like a death rattle. This goes on for several more seconds before ceasing. Heavy breathing and dragging returns, this time getting quieter. 18 minutes in, I can't take any more. I pussy out, and delete the fucking thing as quickly as I can. I know that it's the ex in me that regrets the decision to delete the track, but I still am glad that I did. I couldn't sleep that night. Back in 2008, I was taking care of my grandfather. My grandmother died in 2004. Ma and I took care of him. I covered weekdays and nights, she took the entire weekend. After two years of constant care, I was burning out. It was early October. I was coming off my afternoon shift. Work was tearing me up. I kept a brave face for my grandpa but was burning up inside from the stress. I know it was about 11.30 at night when I walked inside the house. The house was really quiet. Grandpa had been yelling in his sleep nightly, sometimes about bricklaying and other times about ordering mortars to be fired. 
I hope to fall asleep before hearing this sleep talking dreams. Normally Shiloh, grandpa's dog, greeted me at the door to be let outside. She wasn't there. I kept moving inside, hanging my jacket before turning the corner by the kitchen fridge that led to the hallway and my bed. I was just crossing the threshold from kitchen to hallway when a really wicked and dark thought entered my head. I was going to shake it away when my grandma's voice audibly yelled at me, something grabbed my left arm and spun me while screaming, hey. I was now staring into the living room. My arm was burning. Best I can describe is the feeling of being so cold to the point it burns. I knew the hand that had me in that moment. It was her voice, her bony fingers in my forearm. I looked at my left arm and saw red finger marks embedded in the skin of my left hand. The marks weren't fading but staying dark red. I remembered turning back to my room in disbelief. Shiloh was staring from my grandpa's room, just barely out of the doorway. She heard that voice, Grandma hooped Shiloh's ass in life for not listening to her. That dog ran back to my grandpa's bedside and refused to move that night. I shut off everything except the bathroom light and eventually went to sleep. Mark was barely visible in the morning. Grandma shook the shit out of me when I needed it most. Grandpa died later that month. I had a strange dream recently, I remember the setting, just can't really describe what it was like it was this remote rural area, which seemed like some sort of, farm village, but wasn't really. I was driving down a road beside a bunch of crops, in the passenger seat of my mother's car, mother being the driver we were heading somewhere with intent it seemed. The place we were heading to was in an early clearing of a tropical forest area, where there was this large dingy residential building. We stopped in the middle of the place, and the car was approached by the residents of the building, they had heavy auras of malintent, and looked like they were part of those African dictatorial militias one of them came up to the car window. I can't remember how the conversation went exactly, but it was one-sided, and the main points of discussion, were the ransom we had to pay for my mother, and the gruesome details of how they would dismember her if we didn't pay we drove away, mid-conversation if I remember. When we left, clearly my dream sort of cut and suddenly I was walking down the road we came from, alone. I looked ahead and saw my mum, so I ran to catch up with her. She walked into the crops a bit, and was looking away from me when I got near her. She ducked suddenly and I did so synchronously. She pulled out a handgun and pointed out that the militia people were coming after us, and that we'd have to act. The militia people were in a jeep, or something and they drove past without noticing us. My mum ran up, and jumped onto the jeep's back bumper. I followed, first grabbing a steak knife from some people eating nearby. I had to wipe off the stuff on the knife first, though, for some reason, mum and I were hitched onto the back of the vehicle where two of the militia soldiers were seated. They were children, my mum now had a knife of her own somehow, and she cut open one of their throats with a thrust. He slumped over, lifeless. I tried to do the same to the other one, but he didn't die. He showed some pain, but he just sat there, confused almost. There was a pale-skinned lady on top of the jeep, she was doing some sexual-ish flaunting. I climbed up to the top of the jeep, and tried to cut her throat too. Blood poured out of her throat and mouth, and her anguish was far greater than the boys below. The dream ended there. I told my mum about the dream. She said death in dreams is a way for your subconscious to communicate great change in your life. Neither of the people I attacked died. Strange dream, pretty chilling, but probably just strange when told. Hey stalker, hope you enjoyed the video. If I could trouble you, give a like and a sub, it really helps the cause. Since you're already here, why not watch the next video? Anyways, stay comfy. Cortisol is bad for you.